InvestView. Invest in you. Hey, welcome back. Kicking off hour two of a Thirsty Thursday. And uh, we ended hour one going deep inside the FBI with former special agent uh, Paul Wiegartner, former assistant U.S. attorney Paul Wiegartner. Um, who knows where the bodies of bears are on that side? And when we want to go deep into the Democratic side, uh, we go to uh, Washington Insider, former uh, special assistant to the vice president, Joe Biden. Mo Vella joins us in studio. I like it so much better when you're in studio. Yeah, yeah, it's good to be Skype here with you. There. It's yeah. great to be here. I got to get sit on a telephone book when you come <laughs> in, but you look so much bigger than me. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not impressed with Joe. I know you work for Joe yep. Biden. Um, I'm not impressed. I feel like he's limping through this whole thing when candidates are supposed to be running. Yeah. Um, but he maintains the lead. Yeah. And he's still, I guess, the most moderate for those, you know, blue yeah. dog kind of people. Yeah. Um, why is Mike Bloomberg choosing to attack Joe and say he has no experience when he was vice president? Well, let's take a look at what he said, actually, yeah. just to frame the Even better. debate. Yes. Biden doesn't have the experience. He's never been a manager of an organization. Um, he's never run a school system. His wife actually is an educator and has has good experience there. Um, but uh, no, I don't think any of them. You know, it's the the presidency shouldn't be a training job. Wow! You tell me, huh, Mr. Mayor? Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. You know, I, I'm I come I'm a little old school, honestly. I come from that uh, train of thought that. We should tell people why you should vote for your candidate or for yourself and not necessarily focus on why you shouldn't vote for somebody else. I'm not sure tearing somebody else down to build yourself up is the ideal candidacy, right? But look, the mayor is a formidable candidate. The vice president, just like all of the candidates, frankly, have room to improve. Uh, their campaigns are all, you know, constantly trying to be better, and I look forward to, uh, to seeing... Uh, them continue to improve. But Mo, the simple things, like knowing what state you're in, like how does that happen? You know what I mean? You're a pro. Here's you the deal. Know what, what, you should know what airport you landed at. I, I, I don't want to uh, you know, feel like I have to defend Joe Biden for any no, gaps no, no, or I'm just at, no, I'm not, I'm not, no, no, I'm and I don't feel that overall. way. I don't feel like you're doing that at all. Yeah. I just, I'm just saying in general, I don't want to like sit here and try to defend Joe Biden. Here's the deal about Joe Biden. The beauty of Joe Biden is that he um, he keeps it real. Those mistakes of saying you're in the wrong state and the little misstatements here and there, to me, I think it's endearing. Uh, to me, it makes him just like one of us. I right? agree. Like I one think of us may I, make a mistake. The same the thing with President Trump's uh, Twitter typos. Those malapropisms are almost his yeah. version of showing that he's relatable. But uh, obviously, the story I, I thought you were going to compare him to Trump's lies. That's a <laughs> <laughs> well, you want to uh, uh, you want to talk about honesty? I'm not sure Biden's um, <laughs> statement of how he voted on the Iraq War and then how he campaigned on what he wanted to do in Iraq could be considered honest at all. But unlike uh, Joe Biden, Donald Trump actually had the wisdom to oppose the Iraq war. But everyone's <laughs> talking about impeachment. Yeah. Uh, this was Mitch McConnell this morning explaining what's going to happen now that we're heading to the Senate. The failure was made clear to everyone earlier this week when Senator Schumer began searching for ways the Senate could step out of our proper role and try to fix the House Democrats' failures for them. And it was made even more clear last night when Speaker Pelosi suggested that House Democrats may be too afraid, too afraid to even transmit their shoddy work product to the Senate. <coughs> Mr. President, it looks like the prosecutors are getting cold feet. So everyone's forgotten about the fact that there's this big Democratic debate tonight, seven candidates, not including Bloomberg, but including Biden. What does the impeachment debate do to tonight's debate? How does that change the dialogue and the conversation? Personally, I hope it does not take up much more than the appropriate amount of time, which is just a few minutes. Uh, I'm, I'm disgusted that we're even having to talk about impeachment. Okay? Yeah. I ring the bell when we agree. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, I like that. I, I like that. So how can, how can the candidates, um, clearly they're, Sanders and Warren are in their own lane when it comes to single payer. Andrew Yang is in his own lane yeah. when it comes to universal basic income. But how can all these candidates, with the exception of those three, kind of differentiate themselves from the others tonight? Well, 
I, I don't, I don't, I think it's already been made clear what, how they're different. They, you know, th there's a major policy uh, differences between them. If you stop, you just named one of them, right? There, look, bottom line is, I, I, you're not going to get me to sit here on camera and talk about how exciting it is to hear Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders and anybody else go, we agree socialism is not good. No, you know? that, I mean, it, it's been a failure everywhere. It's absolutely, absolutely. Now, tonight's debate actually almost didn't happen because there was this labor the dispute. Union, yeah. um, I understand it's been resolved and the debate is going to go forward, yeah. but do you expect, because that was the backdrop of this debate, do you expect that uh, there will be a little bit more focus on labor issues tonight? Well, I'm sure it's going to come up. It's a, been a, you know, a very core issue for the Democratic Party for decades, and the unions and the Democratic Party have a special relationship, although I, I have to uh, admit that we've seen tremendous union support more, move toward Republicans and uh, you know, various uh, numbers in the last several elections. So it's not, uh, it's not what it used to be, right? But, but certainly I think you're going to hear that. You're going to hear that among all kinds of issues that are facing Americans, right? Hey, Mo, um, I watch MSNBC in the morning to get fired up. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I, I call Morning Joe Morning Joke <laughs> because I, I laugh sometimes at yeah. how badly they distort the facts to make up, you know, to make their case. There's right? a lot of that going on these days. But they had a guy on this morning, I think it's Jonathan Lemire or one of these, you know, p reporters or yeah. something. And he was reporting how... Um, Democratic support for impeachment was at like 90% yeah. in October. Mm -hmm. And now it's being reported at like 75%. Mm -hmm. So is it almost backfiring that some of their own people just like had enough of this already? Like, you know, it's a, a year till the election. Like, leave us alone, right? You know, I'll tell you something. I was a little concerned about that, that poll differential, right? That Those facts you just stated, or, or at least the, the results of that poll, yeah. we should call them. Um, until last night, because until we see how people feel today, now that it is a reality and he is actually impeached, um, I don't know. I want to wait and see. I'm going to just say, if you'll let me come back Yay, and we'll talk hey, about on, the results after the vote last night, because I think they're going to be different than they were the day before. So I you, really do. You think that more people are going to be? I, I think more Democrats are going to be sub, uh, back Supportive to that ninety percent level. Yeah, I really yeah. do. I thought uh, I thought yesterday was. Uh, sad, disgusting, frustrating. I, I just think it, we're wasting so much valuable time on this. If the man would just own up to at least saying, for God's sakes, I should have not said that. You know, remember when Bill Clinton was impeached, he looked in the camera and he apologized to the American people yeah, with remorse. Himself. I'm, I'm saying. Well, I'm know, not I, denying I, that. I, yeah, I was saying. working in the White House at that time, but at least I could look at him in the hallway and say, at least he apologized to the American Got people. It. This right. man won't even take responsibility for having said something so egregious. Again, is it impeachable? That's for others to decide. It, but come on, admit it, that it was wrong. It just so happens that it was 21 years ago today that President that Clinton, Clinton was impeached. impeached. That's correct. This was, let's uh, take folks back in time to 21 years ago. He was President Clinton post-impeachment. The question is, what are we going to do now? I have accepted responsibility for what I did wrong in my personal life, and I have invited members of Congress to work with us to find a reasonable, bipartisan, and proportionate response. That approach was rejected today by Republicans in the House, but I hope it will be embraced by the Senate. I hope there will be a constitutional and fair means of resolving this matter in a prompt manner. Meanwhile, I will continue to do the work of the American people. President Trump have been wiser to go along with the censure proposal that Tulsi Gabbard and others have been pushing. And what other uh, pieces of advice could he take from the Bill Clinton playbook? Hopefully none having to do with women or anything like that. <laughs> I wouldn't uh, be one to give him that yeah. advice anyway. But look, I think I, I just brought it up without even knowing that you were going to play that clip, right? Because to me, the advice I would give the president is, you know what, Mr. President, if you would just acknowledge that maybe you misspoke, maybe you went a little too far, maybe you crossed the line, at least own some of it. That, that's what you just saw in the Bill Clinton uh, clip, right, is him looking in the camera and saying, let's come together, let's do what's right for the country, let's talk about the future, let's work for a better future together. 
You're not hearing any of that. And so that would be the advice. I'm not one to give President Trump advice. He wouldn't listen to me anyway, but that's what I would say. Well, well, he com surprised, he comes out of that, you know, Roy Cohn school of fighting no where doubt. it's, you know, double down. And that's then right. when they come at you, double, double down that's again. Right. Um, and that's kind of got him here. So I yeah. understand what you're saying. But I personally do not believe that there's enough objectivity on the Democrats in the House that if you would have came out and said, hey, look, guys, all right, maybe I pushed the limit a little bit here. Um, sorry about that. Let's move on. I have a really hard time believing they would have let it go. I'm so not, why not double down? I can't disagree with you, to be honest with you, on that because, and solely because there's a pattern. Yeah. You know what? You've got three years in a pattern of, you know, a lot of distortion, a lot of, you know, let's just call it stretching well, yeah, the let truth. Me just, let me just say right, this. Whatever you want to call let it. Me just we say won't this. use the L word. But the Democrats took control of the House mm -hmm. last November. That's right. Right? And got seated in January, right. those folks, mm -hmm. right? There's been three different times where they were calling for impeachment. So it's like once a quarter now. You know what I mean? They finally got them, you know, some articles to get them on. But this has set a terrible precedent going forward. Yeah, I'm glad you raised this, actually, because I think it's time to give Nancy Pelosi a little credit for something. She kept her caucus at bay when there were individuals saying impeach, impeach. She was the one saying, we've got to do this only and only if it's necessary, and only if it's called for. I give her a lot of credit. She held them off and held them off until she thought, in her judgment, she, it just crossed a line. Mo, I give you a lot of credit because you're here, which I love Thank much you. more than when you're over there on Skype. You're so much Thank more dynamic much. in person. So, yeah, we got to have you back soon. Okay? Anytime. I'd love to be lunch. back. And uh, on Liquid Lunch, we're talking to the purple people, those folks that have some reds and some blues, and we have a thoughtful conversation. Um, Mo's one of them. We could talk it through, and uh, at the end, we shake hands and part friends. Quick break, wrapping up today's Liquid Lunch right after this.